right, let me break it down for you. So before my accident, I was a very sensual, sexual, loving being, and I'm still that person. And when I got injured, of course, the first thing on my mind was, oh my God, can I still have sex? I don't even think my friends have asked me, what can you feel, you know, because it's something that they're scared to ask. So yes, sex is amazing. I, I just, I am just the kind of person who just loves sex. I was hurt in a car accident when I was two years old with my mom and my brother and I had a spinal cord injury which left me paralyzed from the C7 T2 level which is about here um, so chest down. I was a passenger in a drunk driving accident my senior year of high school. Uh, we hit a tree head-on and my back snapped in half and I became a paraplegic. So I'm that woman that runs around doing five to six things at once and my life was practically perfect. I was engaged, I bought my house, and or we bought the house, and I was on my way to modeling and acting and everything, and at the age of 26, I got into a horrific car accident, and I broke my neck, I was thrown out of the car, and I became a, they classify me as a C4, C5 quadriplegic complete. I don't remember anything uh, from the accident or really anything right after, which I always say was kind of a blessing because I don't have this reference point of what my life was before that, so I don't compare it. So like, this is just my normal. This is what I do. And, um, and then I grew up. My brother also um, was injured in the car accident. He had a traumatic brain injury. So both of us grew up with disabilities, and I think that really influenced how I felt about myself and I went through a long period of time like trying to figure out how to accept and and feel like confident in my skin but having my brother there uh, I think really helped me because I didn't feel alone in being disabled. When you go through that kind of stuff when you go through traumatic situations like that it does something to the soul it just makes you more resilient it makes you stronger and so for me just knowing that Spiritually, I knew how strong my soul was. And so when I got paralyzed, being paralyzed was nothing. The fact that I was just alive, that meant everything to me. Yes, I was now in a paralyzed body. Yes, I wasn't gonna be able to race a motorcycle or do a Muay Thai kick and kick that bag. But the fact that I still had another chance, another opportunity to live, that's all that I focused on. Uh, let's jump right into it. So. At any point, did you ever feel like, man, I am so screwed as far as getting a relationship? Yeah, I had no idea that people with a disability could have a relationship or fall in love. I never thought my type of guy would ever fall in love with a girl like me with a disability because I never have seen someone date someone in a wheelchair. Um, so I, I had no idea what to expect along with probably the person I dated, had no idea what to expect either. Um, so, is this, is this your first relationship? Since my chair? Yeah. No. Okay, so <laughs> let's talk about your first relationship. Oh jeez, um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I, you don't even have to go into details about I know. the person or anything like that. I just want to know. No, let's talk about the person. <laughs> <laughs> His name, where does he live? Um, what I would like to know is what kind of like emotional trust did it take to let someone into this new body that you mm -hmm. have, you know? Yeah, uh, when I first dated after my accident, it's really scary to basically, to be honest, to 
re-explore my own body and you know whether it's in a chair or out of my chair and to have to put trust into the other guy um it's very it makes you feel way more vulnerable than you could ever expect talk about like what that means to you what that does to your heart and soul you know yeah it's it's an amazing feeling to have someone love you for who you are with and without clothes, to be honest. Um, when you're in your most vulnerable state of mind, you know, and I never thought that someone could ever love me the way I am. Um, and despite something I can't feel or can't move or can't like work, um, you know, and even little things like having to schedule bathroom stuff, you know, it's to be in a relationship with someone you're, with a disability, I feel it's a whole nother type of love, you know? We'll go deeper into that. What, what, like, what do you mean by that kind of type of love? It's a type of love that, honestly, able bodies, when they're together, you don't have that, that conversation starter, you know? Um, with us, it was like, <laughs> what? Oh, God, no, we're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. What um, is it? What is oh, it? my God. No, we're not going to go there. That's what you were talking about. Right? I wasn't talking <laughs> right. about that. Nothing then. Oh, my God. Um, Are you talking about, like, you guys met online? No. Uh, no, no, no. But, like, what I'm talking about is, like, if someone goes, like, oh, how do you do this? You know, like, the first time he asked me, how do I go to the bathroom? I was, like, I don't know. How do you go to the bathroom? Like, it's one of those things that, like, able bodies don't talk about where so uh, he was, needs to know. It was, like, our first or second time hanging out. <laughs> like, actually dating. Oh, my God. I don't know. I'm, I'm Oh, my interested. God. Are we really going to say this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we were just sitting there talking. No, we were laying in bed. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so we were laying in bed talking. Um, and just randomly, one of the questions that came out So, how do you poop? <laughs> <laughs> Not missing a beat. She looks at me and goes, How do you poop? And oh my God. I look at her and I said, I take man poops. Oh my God. <laughs> and that was the first time that we talked about our bowel movement. <laughs> That's how it happened. Um, I was not sexually active in middle school. No, but I always had crushes. I was always on AIM, like talking to boys, which in middle school, like that was the thing, you know? And we had codes for like boys. Um, we gave them like fruit, like, and remember on AIM, you could do like your profile, like relationship status. And we'd put the fruit that we had a crush on on the relationship status. So I was definitely not, I was definitely taking part in like all the flirtation, um, but it wasn't until I got to high school. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was. Okay, so when I was, I guess maybe a freshman in high school or sophomore, I had this huge crush on this boy named Pete and he did theater with me and um, I remember telling him I had a crush on him on AIM, <laughs> which I think back to and I'm like, that is so classic, like 2002 romance. Just like, <laughs> let me tell you how I feel on AIM. And, um, and then he, we were friends, but he sort of pushed away when I told him. And I had this idea in my head that I didn't, I had a lot of judgments on disability and people with disabilities when I was in high school. I didn't want to be angry. I felt like there were people with disabilities that were really angry. I didn't want to be that. And I didn't want to be pushy. I had this fear of like being a disabled girl who was pushy. And, uh, and so when I told him that I liked him, I was really nervous about him thinking that I was like being too forward. Um, and actually after I told him, he like signed off, which I think is just like classic teenage boy. I don't think it was because I was being pushy. Uh, but at the time I was so crushed. I was like, oh God, he doesn't like me. You know, you go through the whole drama. He doesn't like me. And, uh, and then, uh, we did theater together, and after my um, 
sophomore year of high school summer, he asked me out. And we dated my junior and senior year. And that was like my first kiss um, and my first relationship. Um, I lost my virginity when I was 18. Um, so like the summer after my senior year. So like all of this felt so high stakes. And the relationship was super physical, which I think I was sort of surprised at at the time that like, I was like, oh, maybe because I have a physical disability, it wouldn't be that way, but it was. It was like, we actually didn't have as much of, a, of an emotional relationship as we had like a physical relationship. Like we used to make out every single time we were together, I would come home like covered in hickeys because it felt so good on my neck because <laughs> it was like where I could feel. And uh, my mom was like, Allie, no, you cannot, you can't have all these hickeys. It's not appropriate. And I was sort of like, I don't care. I love this. And I loved Pete. I was like, I'm going to marry him and he is my forever love. And that, you know, I think that that is, that's what the first time falling in love was like for me. So basically to shorten all that, what I was saying, when I was with my ex and being in the body, I think it, what helped me is because he knew me before, before my accident. And so he already loved me unconditionally. And so it allowed me to really accept and come into my body. And I went within myself and I'm like, look, you're alive and this is it. And this is what you have. So you got to work with it. And it's funny because I think something clicked where I looked back in the past, I'm like, I sweated all that small stuff of wanting to have the perfect body. And now here I am paralyzed and I have this body. I just gotta love it. And I started embracing it. And so fortunately, because I was with him, it helped. But then the reason why I said there's other answers to this for me is because I've been with different individuals. So after I was not with my ex anymore and I got with a new boyfriend, course the insecurity sets in because now you're looking at other women that he could possibly be looking at he's a young guy he's gonna look at the TNA he's gonna look at the hot girl walking by whatever but it's normal so I think with my mentality just because of my mature level of understanding because I'm the first person that if I see someone sexy or gorgeous I'm all about giving them props like I'm like look at that girl oh my god she's so beautiful oh my god look at her body or look at that guy he's a good-looking guy so I'm very secure in that sense, but when I did start dating my ex, I remember, here it was, I had an atrophied body. I didn't have the muscles. I didn't have an ass, or an arse, as I say it. I had the no acetal syndrome. <laughs> and uh, atrophied breasts, they weren't like the way they were. I mean, I had nice breasts before, but you know, when you're a quad, like everything just atrophies, your muscles, everything. And so I was just kind of like, Ugh. And so you, you want to make sure that you look beautiful and you look appealing and attractive to your love. So that was a huge thing. But I think it was, I just called it out like, look, this is it. I was like, this is my body. This is it. And you just have to basically compensate in other ways. Wow. <laughs> um, for me, when I first heard the words, you're paralyzed. I immediately was like, oh my God, am I gonna be able to feel sex? And it was a scary part of this injury of figuring out what I can and cannot feel. And, you know, for me, I don't even think he's ever asked me like what exactly, I mean, he has, but I don't know. It's, I really think, yes, I can feel sex. Is it different? Yes. Are there parts that I cannot feel? Yes. Are there parts that I definitely feel? Yes. Um, but I also think part of sex is having that connection between the person that you're with. If you're just having sex to have sex, you're not going to orgasm. You're not going to feel what you might feel if you're having sex with someone that you're passionate about. And for me, like, I'm obviously very passionate about Jay and love him. And so, yes, sex is amazing, you know? And do I enjoy having sex? Yes. Like, even though, oh my God. <laughs> even though I am in a chair and there are things that I cannot feel, 
I still enjoy it because I love him and I want to make him happy and I want us to share that together you know and a lot of people I don't even think my friends have asked me what can you feel you know because it's something that they're scared to ask so you know a lot of people who have paralysis or have some sort of disability everyone's different you know we may have high level injuries that can feel everything and then there may may be people that can't feel anything I mean I think that also just comes with how long you've been injured as well as the passion between the two people great answer no it's definitely I mean sex is something that people are afraid to talk about but very interested in and I not that like I'm an expert or we're an expert but definitely having that passion between the two helps the person that's in the chair person living with the disability but also like just having sex for the first time after becoming paralyzed or differently abled is very scary you know exploring that part of your body that you cannot feel is a very scary moment for a lot of people and for me you know I was very scared to see what I could and could not feel um, but once you get past that you learn a lot more about obviously paralysis but also your body as well so <laughs> so what's interesting for me is that I am the kind of lover who really, really wants to be emotionally connected and wants to please somebody else. It's way more vulnerable for me to like think about what I want. And so that has been like a journey for me to be like, no, like what about the sensations literally that you want to feel? And for me, there's no finishing point. Why would I want to finish? I want to always be able to like move through different feelings. I also just don't have like a real relationship like with an orgasm. It's not really like where my body goes. And um, I remember talking to Chelsea about this <laughs> when we were like, Chelsea was probably like a year or two out from her injury and so she was probably around like 20 and I was like 24 and she was like, Allie, like I wish you could have experienced what sex feels like on the other side of it, like on like feeling your entire body and I was like, huh, do I wish that I could have experienced that? I guess, but I love being so physically close to somebody that like I'm so satisfied. Something that is really amazing for me is like because I can only move a part of my body to feel somebody else's body move like with or like against my body makes me feel like I'm moving. And I love, I just am like really into any sensation. Like sensation like turns me on. Like yeah, that. but like sensation turns me on, whatever that might be, because when you live your whole life in a body like this, when you do hit sensation from anywhere, it's a surprise and a jolt in your body. And it's cool. It's like, <gasps> whoa, like, oh my God, I'm feeling something. Also, um, something that would really hurt somebody else. So my injury is incomplete. So it's not like a hard line I can't feel, but something that would hurt, like be painful to somebody else is feels good to me. So it's like, I just need a little more <laughs> force. Yeah, and, and I'll just say like, I, I never enter these like sexual experiences being like, okay, where's the checklist? What am I gonna feel and what am I not? Like that to me is not fun. And it's like, feels so in the box. And I've never done things the way that anybody else has. So like, I'm always just like looking for new ways, which is kind of a fun way to approach sex. When we're talking about orgasms here, I'm gonna break something down because we need to pull up some layers here. So 
I lost my virginity when I was 14 and I was already very in tune with my body because I grew up in Spain and I think I was like 10, 10 and a half or 11 and I, I, I wouldn't, nobody taught me about puberty and my menstrual and whatever and uh, I don't know but Europeans are a little more ahead of their time with like sexual and just being very open and so I remember yeah at 11, 10 or 11 they were way ahead of their time now that I'm remembering because people are already kissing, French kissing and then at 11 you're like what? You gave him a BJ? What? Like yeah and then at 12 to 13 I remember girls were like losing their virginity already so I what I was trying to say was that I already had read up about just the human body and just being open and and everything. And I remember my girlfriend actually gave me this book. I remember the cover. It had these big hot pink lips and the title was basically How to Make Love to a Man. And I remember reading it. And so at 14, I lost my virginity. And uh, the reason why I'm talking about this is because even at there's women out there that are like 30 years old and they never had an orgasm. So at 14, I was already very in tune with my body. So I was already very comfortable and I was very open. I could relax and I can have orgasms. And so I think that's really important because, because of that, because I was so in tune with my body before the accident, I think that's why now it's like effortless in a sense. Do you know? Because there's some girls that probably were injured very young and they probably didn't even lose their virginity till after their accident. So either they never really felt a real orgasm or they're not in tune with their body. They, they don't know what to base it off of. So at least at 14, all the way up until I was 26, I didn't have a problem with being comfortable and having multiple orgasms or orgasms or making myself orgasm or whatever so after being paralyzed I remember I actually oh my god I'm actually remembering now that was a big thing that I did that was one of the things that I was trying to reconnect with my body when I laid there in the hospital that night that was the first thing I thought of was I need to do my kegel exercises and I was like laying there paralyzed from the neck down and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna squeeze. Just If I can't feel it, I'm just gonna squeeze down there and just keep squeezing and squeezing. And as I was meditating, I would like send this white light down into my body just to try to reconnect everything. Because if you're, if we take it to like Kundalini or just like Eastern beliefs of just your chakras and everything and getting all the energy in those areas just to wake the body up, I was just focusing on those areas to really reconnect and heal my body. And so it's funny, sometimes when I have spasms that are just intense and I want to calm my body down or reconnect with my body, I'll just end up going to the Kegel muscle and just like, I remember, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna say something, it's gonna sound crazy. So I'm just gonna put it out there, no filter whatsoever. So that was my big thing was, how tight can you squeeze that Kegel muscle? So I don't know if you've been to Bangkok, you see them Thai women, they sit on them bottles and they go up and the bottle is gone. They go back down and then there's the bottle. But that was my thing was my muscles were really strong. So when I was paralyzed, that was my thing was like, I can't feel it. I can't move it. Oh my God. That's like my superpower. My superpower is gone. So I need to focus and get it back. And so that's when I would like just sit there or lay there and try to focus on that and I guess that I don't know that helped me reconnect back to my body in a sense even though I wasn't moving it at that time and I wasn't feeling it at that time so yeah after I divorced my ex I jumped into the whole dating thing and I mean right after I jumped into a relationship a two and a half year relationship with a very young guy and when I was in that relationship, I thought, oh, okay, this is cool, in a sense, because he's young. Uh, and maybe the reason why I'm with him is because I have to learn now how to teach someone. It allowed me, I think if I got with someone older that was like, I'm not saying that all older men are set in their ways, but 
considering that my ex was young, he was 24 when I met him, and he was like an adventure. We were like, all right, let's do this. Let's, you know, he's like, I've never been with a woman that's paralyzed. I was like, um, I don't expect you to have been with a woman with that's paralyzed. He's like, I don't know what to do. I was like, it's okay. Don't worry. We'll, 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 I'll help you out. Don't worry. I'll explain everything. And so after having that experience and I loved him, he was a sweetheart, but he was just too young and I wanted a family and everything. So I broke up. I went celibate for a year. I tried. It lasted for nine and a half months. And I started dating again. And like I said, I don't have a problem with meeting guys and starting to date guys. It was just a matter of finding a guy that was a man of his word who was going to be there. If they said they were going to do something, they followed through. And there's a sense of understanding without having to speak that is required at least for me and my sake just so that there's that comfort that comfort level and then as of making love and, and dating and everything I mean it's just like anyone else it doesn't it's just it's the energy it's the chemistry it's all about the energy yeah, I, I see so I want to piggyback on what you just said because to me I've always been loved unconditionally that's what I received from my family oh Big time, big time. I was like unconditionally loved. So I can recognize that. To me, it was finding the person who was going to be my partner and to be with me through all of the really, really amazing times and then through all of the pain and the shit. And I wanna say one other thing about learning to love yourself. I think it starts with acceptance. And some people are like, how can you accept something like this? How do you do that? Like, tell me how, because I would like to do it. I've been challenged before. Because I do talk about this kind of stuff when I do speaking gigs, and I've spoken to you know groups of people with disabilities, and they're like, that's bullshit. And to me, acceptance comes from a place of knowing that in the end I'm going to be okay. That was given to me by my parents. So that's not something that I just found on my own, but I suggest to anyone to find your tribe, find your home team. It might not be your family. It might be friends who are going to assure you that you are going to be okay exactly the way you are. Mm -hmm.